the focus problem today, uh, I'm going to begin with a little story to, to uh, illustrate what the focus problem is. This is Guilin in China. It's a very beautiful place. Um, it's also it's near Guilin. It's in, uh, I think it's in Guizhou province, if I remember correctly. Uh, I took this photo when I was there, I think, about 2004. And look at these beautiful cast mountains in the background. And there's a, a town just down from Guilin, about one and a half hours on the river, um, which is called Yangshuo. And uh, I'll tell you about a particular thing that I saw one time, which really interested me when I was in that, in that town. I've been there many times. My wife and I were walking along the river, which is much like this, a bit further upstream, where the, city, where the town is. And all along the river, there were these stalls, these markets, where you could buy all these like trinkets and Chinese fans and wallets and all, all this kind of, well, rubbish, basically, touristy rubbish. <laughs> and this, this stall went all along the river, like maybe five or 600 metres. And all the Chinese tourists were out there, and a few Westerners, not too many Westerners. And my wife and I walked along there, and my wife was interested in all the, the trinkety stuff, and not, not so much me. Anyway, when we got to the end of the stalls, <laughs> and all the, all the people were lined up in the stalls, um, the, stall, the last stall ended here, and then there was a little bit further, and there was a track which went up into the, into the forest, all along the, the river, just like this, okay? So you could walk up there, really beautiful. But the interesting thing for me was, the where the last stall was, the people stopped. Nobody went beyond the last stall. So uh, that intrigued me, um, because why would it, you visit a place like this to go shopping? <laughs> and to me, that emphasized something that's happened not only in China, but all around the world. Um, people's minds are becoming confined by the market mentality. And uh, so this is part of what I call the split in the modern mind. Uh, I don't really like screens with too much information, but I'll just quickly go through this. So my argument is that time and space have been reconciled in the, in the modern era, uh, in the, the post-industrial society, and people are unconsciously uh, conditioned uh, to focus their attention on things uh, or, or a very narrow range of experience. And some other experiences which are more um, spiritual or intuitive um, or embodied are being uh, are being lost. So, as I put it there, the, the, the cognitive spaces of our lives have been colonized by an unconscious and invisible hegemon. Some of you have heard people speaking about this kind of thing already this, this weekend, maybe not in the same, the same way. So, the red part there, uh, we live in a state of dissociated abstraction and distraction, the split in the modern mind. Now, abstraction is, uh, is a cognitive process of uh, taking the world and the, the mind symbolizes it or, co or codifies it in the, in the left brain. So you don't actually experience the world, you experience the image of it more in the mind. Um, this is a particularly interesting quote from Darwin. And this is what he said when he was an old man. He said, uh, Later in life I wholly lost to my great regret all pleasure from poetry of any kind. My mind seems to become a kind of machine for grinding general laws out of large collections of facts. And I think in a way this is... Um, an archetypal uh, situation here where a man, a smart man, uh, lost, has lost part of his own uh, spirit, if you like, through the incessant focus on classification and, uh, and, and decodification of nature. <coughs> to some degree, I think all of us have experienced this. This is my argument. So this is the, my representation of the split in the modern mind. You know? So the, the left brain, uh, which I've actually put on this side, the left side here. Well, this is actually the front of the brain, so technically it's around the wrong way, but uh, these are the kind of ways of knowing that we tend to be good at. 